So when we speak about life management, <clears throat> life management has space life, make life. Facing life, no choice, and everyone will have to face life. Even if this fact is understood, a lot of things will become clear. Because many people don't want to face life. Many people don't want to face certain circumstances which come, certain experiences which come. Want to escape, want to avoid, <clears throat> want to run away, <clears throat> I don't like this. In facing life, there is absolutely no choice. Like it is said in the Gita, there is no choice. You can't live without action. You have to do action. In the same way, there is no choice. Life will bring experiences. Now that this has come, what do I do? Some of you have come here by your choice. And you have to face me. Some of you have come not by your choice. Maybe somebody has pushed you, somebody has sent you. And maybe you say, why do I have to go through all this? But you don't have a choice as of now. You have to be here. I have to face you, you have to face me. So same way, everywhere life has, it will bring some experience. I have to face, I can't escape. The energy that sometimes we put in escaping, if that is put in trying to face it, that is so much more better. Students try to escape their study. Join the college, but bunk. People get into a job, drag through that work, somehow want to finish it, don't feel like going back to work, want to escape, given a chance, if there is a long weekend, take one Thursday also off and take four or five days off straight away. People get married, then they want to escape from that, but somehow they can't escape. <laughs> So many situations come like that in life, where I have to face my life and that I have no choice. If I understand that, then I will not run away. What was the difficulty with Arjun? He didn't want to face the world. So though there are two steps, face life, make life, in face life there is no choice. And I have to understand that very clearly. This does not mean that we can't make a choice to exit from something or you can't make a choice of avoiding something. That, this is not that. What we mean here is certain experiences, certain things which come to us, maybe unasked also, or maybe I have only chosen. Now I have to face it. I can't escape. There was one lady. She put an advertisement in the newspaper. Husband wanted. <coughs> and she got 20 replies. All of them saying, take mine. <laughs> huh? Normally we have to ulta. Why wanted the replies, take mine? <laughs> oh, normally we have to ulta. <laughs> Nowadays it is very dangerous to use husband or wife. Gender wife should not be there only. We should use our only spouse. <laughs> so anyway, so the thing is, in facing life there is no choice. Let me understand that very clearly. That I have no choice in facing life. Especially the choices that I have made, that I should go through with joy. Once we do that, when experiences come to us, what we make of that life, that complete choice we have. So in this, what I have to make of my life is what I have to think for myself. <clears throat> Not many think of what do I want to make of my life. What is the vision that I have for my life? <clears throat> you take five minutes, I'll give you five minutes. Write your vision of life in one sentence. Think about it and write. This course is going to be like this one. I will tell you to do exercises, I will tell you to write, I will tell you to think, discuss, many things will happen. So your vision of life you have to write in one sentence. If you need paper or something, 
Chain of experiences leading to upliftment. That is your vision of life. Okay. And that's what you want to make of life. To uplift life. Okay. Anybody else wants to share? I very small. That's okay. It doesn't have to be big at all. My ambition of life is to attain maximum happiness. Should I explain what it means? <coughs> what I do is I try and define happiness in two or three things that I want to do. And then each of those things are broken up into like a small daily task, which you know go in attaining that goal which ultimately leads to happiness in life. Anyone else? Be balanced, uh, balanced in all aspects of life. Be balanced in all aspects of life. Uh, creating value with everything I do, and to be absolutely happy no matter what. Right. Creating value and to be absolutely happy. Wonderful. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. You learn to improve. You learn and keep improving. Live a healthy, amicable life, perform my duties towards family, friends, and society. Louder. Healthy, amicable life, and performing duties towards family, friends, and society. Constant awareness of the present moment bliss. Constant awareness of the present moment bliss. <coughs> to live a happy life and be remembered for something positive stroke righteous. Very nice. To spread radiance through knowledge. To spread radiance through knowledge, what you have gained. Anyone else? Keeps my family extremely happy and satisfied. Right. To accomplish uh, my responsibilities as, a, and as my duty without any punishment, and, and at the same time, Endeavor to dissolve my ego to reveal my true identity. Right. Do the duty, dissolve the ego, know yourself. Right. Anyone else? <coughs> to achieve true happiness in life. To achieve true happiness in life. To reach the level of perfection and thus become one with the perfect. Reach the level of perfection and become one with the perfect. Right. <coughs> Be a humble seeker of knowledge and fulfill my responsibility. Seeker of knowledge, fulfill responsibility. <coughs> okay. And being able to develop spiritually and develop spiritually and in unison with my family. No, 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 Okay, develop spiritually and be in unison with the family. So quite a few have a family in their local life. Very good. To be in the activity which I am doing. And enjoy whatever I'm doing. Whatever to enjoy whatever I'm doing. Who else is left? To attain awareness. Ava. To attain awareness. To 
rise to all occasions and shine at the time. Rise and shine. Very nice. Somebody. Happy and successful family and professional life. Family and professional life. Happy and successful. Yes. Who do you like to share? I want to do something for more children. Good. Education. Be kind and helpful. So you spread joy. Right. Life, aspire everything, whatever aim you have. So, do that and fulfill whatever needs you have, basically. And be happy. Yeah. Be happy. To be spiritually situated. To be spiritually situated. Okay. Fine. Um, so, my vision of life is to serve, purify, realize. <clears throat> so, each one of us has different vision of life and what is important is when we, what we make of life depends on our vision. So this we call it as our, <coughs> what you have written is your vision statement. <coughs> what is important is to understand this vision cycle. Some of you may know, know the cycle of the vision. As my knowledge is, so is my vision of life. As my vision is, so will be my values. As my values are, so will be my desires. As the desires, so the thoughts. As the thoughts, so the action. As the action, the results. The result further strengthens the knowledge. So knowledge plays a very, very, very vital role in our life. As is the knowledge, so will be my vision. <clears throat> and the whole life is actually determined by the kind of knowledge that we have. we have to understand clearly. Once you note down, then we will be able to do this. So give me one example of this, that how knowledge drives this whole cycle. An examination, yes, studying for it with the knowledge which the vision to create something which eventually leads to detailing, which leads to maybe something for the profit. Okay, but there my vision is driving my knowledge. Our point here is that how does the knowledge drive this? If you have knowledge about the opportunities, only then can you make choices to what your vision would be. Right. Even to have my vision, like today, just now you, so many of you said na, that I want to be happy, doing what I want to do, or I want to keep my family happy, satisfied, I want to create value, serve the poor, so many things. That vision, came from where? That vision came from your knowledge. Whatever is your knowledge. <coughs> Based on that you decided this is my vision. <coughs> if somebody feels that, if, if somebody's knowledge says that you know money is most important in life and my vision of life is I have to make maximum money. No problem. So then that knowledge is driving that vision. According to those vision will be the values that I entertain. <coughs> If love is more important, service is more important, kindness is more important, that all depends on the knowledge and the vision that I have. If my knowledge is that no money is most important, <coughs> or
or enjoyment is most important or fame is most important then accordingly my vision is i need to attain those then accordingly i value those things which will help me to get those <clears throat> so i may not value love more than money i may not value fame more than money it depends on what is my vision whichever is my vision which is guided by my knowledge accordingly i will have the values of life so can vision be balanced or does one be exclusive to the other you can have two three things or sure. three things yeah yeah like so many people said not two three things in their vision they have two three things you can have so that's not knowledge right belief you have to believe that money is more important that's belief that's not knowledge I mean, then you, if we differentiate it that way, then because if I am saying that it is belief, service, or money is most important, that is a belief. That is not knowledge. It's a value. Knowledge is a. Uh, then what is knowledge? See, the thing here is that I have come to have that belief because of some conditioning. It is not something which I am um, trying to experiment. Yeah, a belief is something which is. Which can go like this or like this. It's based on an individual perception. Yes, individual but perception. Yeah, but in this case, the belief, which according to the perception has got transformed into conviction, is what we call as the knowledge. So I have seen my parents, or I have seen people in the society. I have come to understand that oh, because of this, 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 money is most important. This is conditioned knowledge. Yeah, I mean, this cannot be absolute knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Every knowledge is conditioned knowledge. Please remember. There is nothing called unconditioned knowledge. Even the knowledge of the absolute truth is conditioned. If you say truth is sat, or truth is infinite, or truth is chit, all that is a pointer, right? It's a condition. So every knowledge is conditioned knowledge only. <clears throat> And the very fact that the results can alter the knowledge means that. that there is a point in time when suppose i say money is most important i follow this vision i get the result i get money also but then i understand you know money is not most important but i got money but still maybe happiness is eluding me fulfillment is eluding me that result can influence my knowledge it can completely change my knowledge saying that no i was living with this conviction and this is what i have done i have seen the result money is necessary in life but more important is love more important is service more important is fulfillment so that knowledge can get altered a belief is something which i am testing a belief can go you can not believe in it even after some time so you know condition of the same thing can happen yes but there it is happening when i was acting through it i am acting it with conviction that yes this is most important money is most important. when i see through the result so you can say that way belief and knowledge are the same if you apply it in that sense uh that i am testing it out if you go deeper into it my knowledge that i am this limited individual drives my vision that i am incomplete so i need to become complete so my values will be i do this then i become complete i go there then i become complete i become that i become complete according to with my desires thoughts action results so knowledge leads to your what you achieve in life what you make of life that's where we came from what we make of our life it is determined by what knowledge that we have most of the time we focus only on this even in the school etc moral education is what teach good values have good manners speak the truth don't tell lies don't cheat other people which is required no doubt in that noble values one must have but what is my vision of life itself that this is what i will attain in my life externally internally both <coughs> so what vision that you have written many of you have written the subjective aspects one has to put the objective aspect also 
What many people do is they have only the objective aspect. I will create a legacy in this IT field. I will go beyond what Steve Jobs created. Some new technology, some new thing, some day, some that. Which is very good. So one is to have an objective vision that by in my life this is what I want to achieve externally. And second is to have a subjective vision that through that what is it that I as an individual personally, internally want to achieve. <clears throat> Objective thing is quantifiable and it should be quantifiable. It should not be uh, vague. If you say I want to create a legacy, that is very vague. So in the management terms, they call it as smart. It should be specific. It should be measurable. It should be achievable. Realistic, time bound. Your statement must be a smart statement. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound. <clears throat> so if I say that you know I want to learn A simple goal, it's not a vision of driving. Even a simple goal, let us say I want to learn driving. If I say I want to learn driving, it is incomplete. It is a specific thing, I want to learn driving. It should be measurable. So I want to learn driving means I should I want to learn driving to be able to drive on the roads in Mumbai. Achievable? Yes. Realistic? But yes, I can but it will depend on the time. If I say I want to learn driving and drive in Mumbai in five days time, not possible. Maybe I need some more time, go through it properly. So I have to put all these five, the statement that I write for myself must have all these five aspects. So that is your homework. That what you need to do is to put your objective vision in a statement to satisfy these five. <clears throat> so that that statement becomes complete and you have a timeline, you can measure it that I have achieved this goal when this, this happens. It is specific, it is measurable, it should be achievable, realistic and time bound. <clears throat> right. So we may, on this part, that vision has two aspects, one is the external, one is the internal. Many people put only the external goals in their life, external vision in their life, 10 years down the line, this is what I want to be, 20 years down the line, this is what I want to be. One has to couple that with the subjective goal. That what do I want to achieve in my life? Because externally, no matter what I do and what I create will remain here only. But internally, as a person, I grow. Internally, that is the mind that I carry. That is what comes ahead with me in my journey ahead. So, internally what do I want to do? That I have to put down very clearly. So, this is the vision cycle, knowledge, vision, values, desires, thoughts, action, result. So, what we are going to do here is the knowledge that we have, as he said, that is a, it's a conditioned knowledge. Right? Now, what is important to check in that knowledge is how uh, how true is that knowledge and how much of it is a delusion. So that discrimination is very very important. So if I say that happiness is in the world outside, that is my knowledge. So my vision is that I must do something to become happy. My value will be for doing that particular thing to become happy, whatever I need to do, I will start doing that. Example, if I say happiness is in watching a movie. So my knowledge says happiness is outside, my vision says I have to get it from outside. So all my values will be towards that. So I will think that now what will get me that happiness? Going to a movie, going to some party, watching some... Okay. 
eating some food, hearing some music, all that. So my values will determine this desires that I have. That this is what I want to do, these are the desires that I have, this is how I, then the thoughts will arise, then the actions will arise. So if the knowledge is that the world is having happiness outside, the whole thing drives by that. Vedanta asks us to question that. Is there happiness actually outside there? That's where the clarity has to come. That the knowledge that I have, I have to examine that knowledge. But is it something like happiness, a subjective goal? Because it's very, it's, uh, it's inanimate, right? It's not True. something that you can achieve from outside. It's something you can't get from within. Exactly. So that's the whole thing. It is a subjective phenomenon. It is a relative phenomenon at the subjective level. Um, but what happens is, my knowledge today says that it is outside. I am trained to condition, I am conditioned to believe that, right? That you have this kind of clothes, ah, you look so good and then people will feel so good about you, then you will You eat this type of food, you go to this type of place, you become this type of person. So my knowledge is, I am conditioned to believe that it is outside. And hence my vision is I should get maximum things to become happy. So my value will be that I must get all those, whichever way I have, I can get. So the desires will be according to that. That's why it is important to examine what is my knowledge. Book like Bhajan Govindam which we are going to see examines each and every aspect of our life. It will examine our understanding about wealth our understanding about relationships, our understanding about body, our understanding about time, about spirituality, about spiritual practices, about self-knowledge, about happiness, very very fundamental aspects of life about which I must have the clarity. And so when we examine that knowledge, the purpose of that knowledge, the purpose of that examination is that we must wake up from the delusions that we have. And that is very strange. The purpose of knowledge actually is to destroy delusion. But the kind of knowledge that we have been given is creating the delusion also. Materialistic knowledge. Huh? Because this is this knowledge is materialistic. Yes, because that is the knowledge that has been given to us is very limited. It is, it is not the knowledge of the personality, how it works. It is external type of knowledge. And that's why if you see our whole life goes on round and round and we do so many things and yet we are unfulfilled. Because the base of that, this knowledge is very uh, a deluding type of a knowledge. And the beauty of that is, I think that that reducing knowledge is the right knowledge that I have. <laughs> so if somebody tells us that look, happiness is not outside, be happy, contented by yourself, they will say, you have gone mad. This and all we can apply only after retirement. As of now, it is outside only. Okay. Based on knowledge, like we know that, for example, if I know that I am complete, and so, though my thoughts are not matching my knowledge, like my thoughts are completely different. Like I might just run outside behind things, not, not that I disrespect my knowledge. I, I, I have faith in them. I have faith in the very statement. And so I keep my vision as, yes, I want to realize that completeness. And because, because I can raise, so that I can raise my, my mind level, I can raise my thought level. But, and, I, and, and if we keep on studying and if we keep on adding to our knowledge, but still our thought differs from our knowledge. We can't blame the knowledge then. But then what to blame or what to do? No, that is a different situation. Where you have the right knowledge but your thoughts are acting differently, that is where the practice is coming. 
Now that you have the knowledge, then you have to do certain things, give it certain self-control, do certain spiritual practices, so that the thoughts will turn introverted and align with your knowledge. So one is to have the right knowledge first. Then, up, then the second step comes, is the difficulty that I have the right knowledge but I am not able to practice. Why? Because my mind is not available right now. Because the mind is fascinated by outside things. Partially the, now, half, the right knowledge will cure half of it. But the force of habit which is there, that doesn't go only by knowledge. That goes only by practice. And that's why the allied disciplines in spirituality are there. That it's a complete thing, it's a whole. It is not just theoretical knowledge. It is understanding, backing it up with the right adjustments in my life so that that knowledge appli becomes applicable and it transforms. Uh, knowledge is, uh, is objective and subjective. Yeah. Objective, I think every individual will have a particular goal in life, an object where you can decide, be decided, and know everything. That would be the smarts may be completed also. Yeah. But, uh, I think to transform that into being subjective is I think a tougher, tough path to go through because not everything which is objective can be transformed into a subjective thought. Yes. Or a vision. Correct. Right? It so, might not just be possible to transform every objective vision to a subjective But that is not required. We are not trying to transform every objective vision into subjective vision. We are trying to have a clear understanding that in my life these are the objective things which I want to do. And what is it that is going to happen to me through that as an individual? What is my personal growth within? So if I say that I gave the example of learning to drive. Okay. So now that learning to drive and driving on the roads in Mumbai and a certain timeline, that is objective knowledge. But what is the subjective uh, growth through that? One is I have overcome a certain inhibition. I have learned something new. I have learned to, uh, maybe if there was any fear or anything, I have learned to overcome all that. And I have equipped myself with something which is maybe even a necessity. How I am doing that, how I am learning driving, how I am going to drive, what is my attitude behind it, all that is a subjective aspect. So it does not have to actually translate into a subjective goal. If my goal is, like she said, to do, to enjoy what I do every minute, Am I enjoying driving? That is my subjective growth. So is it subjective growth of every individual suddenly the same? Uh, no. Because each, temp each individual's temperament will differ. So each individual grows in their own way. The ultimate goal that they all reach of happiness, that is the same. Somebody may grow through an activity, somebody may grow through devotion, somebody may grow through knowledge, somebody may grow through intellectual process. There are different ways to grow subjectively. But the ultimate destination that each one needs to reach is the same. Happiness, peace, love, all that, that, is, that remains the same. Right. So, we were on this aspect that knowledge needs to be examined and we must have the right understanding the right knowledge because that determines a lot of things in our life. And the books like Bhajagavidam, they are to help us to wake up from delusory knowledge. Simple example, all of us know that life is short or life is uh, limited. At one point or the other, this body we will have to turn. But do we still live with that knowledge? <coughs> Somewhere deep down, the knowledge in us is, <clears throat> I am not going to die. The, that is the way we live. If I live with that awareness, with the right knowledge that no, a day is going to come and I am going to drop. So, how am I leading my life? Time is running away so fast. What am I doing <clears throat> with the time that I am having? Am I postponing my evolution? Am I living with that awareness that time is short, so let me do what I have to really achieve in life. How do I do? So though somewhere back of the mind I may even be aware that yeah, one day I have to drop, but that knowledge is not in my conscious mind. So it is not coming into my practice. So my vision still is, abhi to bhoat time hai. So many things I have to achieve. 
my value will be, I don't value that time so much. So intensely I don't do that spiritual practice. So I have to wake up from those kind of delusions. That time is there. Time is not there. Time is always, every minute it is, you are losing. <coughs> the very concept that you know I have time is a myth. I don't have time. I don't get stressed out and psyched out by that. <laughs> a lot of people who get, they simply get hyper because I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. And they have two things to do but they are so tense about it. Idea is not to get tense about it. Idea is to be aware. Yes, time is short. Do I really value the time? Same way, relationships. In such a short life that I have, where is the time for me to have hatred and fight and you know anger and jealousy? There is not enough time to love. Where is the time to do all this? So the idea here is that the knowledge that we have, one has to examine the knowledge. Get up from the delusions. And hence this Bhajagovindam is called as Moha Mudgara. Moha Mudgara. Moha means delusion, Mudgara means to destroy. <coughs> so that which destroys our delusion and gives us the right understanding that is this Bhajagavad Gita. <coughs> 31 verses are there in this book. This is the composition of Adi Shankaracharya. One of the very great masters of our culture. Because of whom the Hindu culture is what it is today. He revived the whole culture. Next class we will see more about him. <coughs> Understand what he did, how he lived his life. So he wrote this composition, Moha Mudgara. There are 31 verses and uh, the first 14 verses are written by him. Uh, then the next 16 verses are by his other disciples and then there is one last verse which is by him. So that way it comes to 31 verses. So each verse in this Bhajagavindam is what we call as a wake up call. It is to wake us up from the delusion that one has. And to the extent we are able to wake up, to that extent we find our life transforming internally and externally both. <coughs> Even in the country, if you see the development of the countries, today they say that we are moving towards, now we are moving towards, we are in knowledge economy. Or we are Five years ago, we were moving towards knowledge economy. Ten years ago, we were moving towards knowledge economy. Today, we are a knowledge economy, where knowledge is the basis of everything. So, it is very, very important to examine what kind of knowledge we have and what kind of knowledge is necessary for life management. So, when we say life management techniques, actually the word technique is not applicable here. It is a life management vision. But yes, we have said life management techniques. So we are going to have the right vision and the techniques of how to apply that vision into our daily lives. So what you will need to do is, uh, next week when you come, you will fill up a registration form and uh, uh, you will get the valuable in the book. You have to bring one file with you. Or you keep it in your home, whatever. Because we will give you some printouts or notes or some activity sheets, so that you have to keep filing that. And uh, I need one person who can be in charge, uh, who, who can have the phone numbers and emails of everybody in the group, so that uh, the message is sent out in case of any change in plan. Second, third and fourth Sunday is where we will have this class, uh, 9 to to begin with, we will do 9 to 10 because the Upanishad Ganga comes at 10. But in March, the Upanishad Ganga should get over. Then we will do from 9 to 10.30. So one person to volunteer for the, um, to coordinate the class. Okay, so Chidmai will do that. So today before you leave, you can just leave your uh, uh, 
phone numbers and emails with him. And he can form the group that you will need a platform. And one person I need to take charge of.